Hey guys, it's Brandon here, and today I have a quick little video showing you guys how to use your time capsule as a file or media server. Now, if you're like me, and your memory is completely shot on your computer, 80% space used, or, or if you have more than that, uh, God bless you, but um, if your space is completely shot and you, you, you want to you, you move your media someplace else and still be able to access it fast without having to use a USB drive or without having to use like a, a Dropbox or a cloud type of program which is on the internet. If you want to be able to access it really quickly and conveniently and still safely, you're going to want to do what I'm about to show you. And that's to make a file server using your time capsule. Come down to Finder. Once you find in your shared over here, your airport, time capsule, or whatever you're using, it could be a my, my book for Mac, it could be pretty much anything that uh, has wireless capability. You're going to come into data, which basically represents the time capsule, and you're going to see, hopefully, a, a backup disk already on here. Now, Brandon's MacBook Pro this this is essentially my backup that I've already done and by backup I mean my time machine backup located in system preferences now if you don't know what this is if you if you're completely confused right now of what the time machine is it's basically a backup that performs um, annual backups of your computer uh, over you know 24 hours so it's it's constantly backing up your computer taking files and everything and put putting them on the the external drive so that in the future if you for some reason delete a file such as this parasailing video if I were to delete this um, now it already backed up so basically if 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 I delete something and and I wanna go pull and I don't have it in the trash anymore if I've emptied the trash don't panic you could go into the time machine and pull it from from the past and bring it back into the future or the present time so this is a really easy feature to use. I'm not going to explain too much about it, but I just wanted you guys to know that this thing right here represents the the, the time capsule or the time machine backup disk. So once again, step one, share drive or your airport, whatever you have here. Data, if you have your, your backup, which I highly recommend you do first, that's that right here. As soon as you're done with that, backing it up, you're just going to file, or you're going to right click new folder or you can always go to file new folder um, once you do that which I've made here you can call it whatever you want I called it file server just so it's so it's easy to notice oh the, the other one pop up right there just trash that uh, create another folder and from here you can put whatever the heck you want in this file server or this folder and how you do that is simply go up into your spotlight and search it iPhoto, drag and drop right into there. Same thing for your iTunes library. Drag and drop, and you're done. Now, I don't know what you guys are going to be using this file server for. I, I know for sure that I'm using it for my iTunes and my iPhoto library because these two things are what take up most of the space on my computer. And once I delete all of the photos uh, and and delete whatever music I don't want or whatever music I don't want to be using um, every so often or every day I'm gonna have a lot of space freed up on my computer and I know about 65 to 70 percent of my computer is taken up just by media so yeah that's that's pretty much easy to do just getting the stuff on there but now accessing it might be a little confusing for you guys so the way you access this remotely and what I mean by remotely is if you're at grandma's house and you have your computer and you don't have and you're not near your your drive you, you could be a hundred miles away you could still be able to access this and I'll show you how to do that now so you're gonna come down to iPhoto or iTunes whatever you want and you're just gonna hit the command hold down your sorry not command you're gonna hit the option button as well as click iPhoto at the same time it's going to bring this up. It's going to say which iPhoto or which photo library do you want iPhoto to use? Now, this is what I call a pointer. This is something that is pointing to the library that the MacBook 
is going to be using. So I have my aperture library, nothing's in there. I just have aperture on here if, if I ever wanted to use it in the future. But I have my iPhoto library, which is located in, in Brandon, which is this the, the internal hard drive. And then I have my iPhoto library, which is located in the file server. That's the, that's the, um, the time capsule. So if I click the time capsule, it's going to take a little longer than if I had my internal library selected. And that's because it's pulling everything from uh, it's it's pulling everything from the, the time capsule server. So once I pull it up, it's going to be the same exact things that uh, I had, and it's going to be a little bit more choppy. And that's once again because it's it's going through the server. It's not directly on the device, so it's going to be a little bit slower. But once it's up and running, it's just as fast as if you had it on there. And I have all of my albums, my events, everything on here. It's it's very easy to use. It's the same exact thing, and um, it it works perfectly because it's this this stuff is technically not even on my MacBook. It's not on my hard drive, so I have a whole lot of space once I delete the existing album located or the existing iPhoto library currently on the the internal drive. Now I do the same thing for once I close this out my iTunes library option select choose library and from here all you gotta do is choose iTunes this one which is located on my drive my my internal drive or you go to airport data file server iTunes open and you're done I mean, it's all this. All this thing here is once again, it's a pointer. It's just asking where do you want to access, where do you want to grab your files from. You either want it from the internal drive, or do you want it from the external drive? So that's pretty much it for this. If you have any questions, if you're confused, it, I just shoot me an email or shoot us a, a message in our inbox. I'd be glad to help you. Um, I'm learning myself. If you have any tips for me. I love learning about new computers, software, stuff like that. So if you, you're you confused, just leave a comment. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to us and like it. I really appreciate it. So this is from Brandon with a little tech bite, a little tech help. Thanks for watching.